If I can. My oh, goodness. Okay, James, you're losing me. There you go. <laughs> James chapter 3. This is very important. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Did y'all hear that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we may not pick up a physical stone these days and say, They need to be stoned according to the Word of God. They need to be excommunicated. They need to be thrown out of here. But we pick up a stone with our tongue. Stones of judgment. And we start assassinating the character. Did y'all know God looked at that as murder? And we start character assassination? That is breaking one of the commandments of God. We actually murder them people. What, death or life or what? In the power of what? Oh, what, the tongue. That little old member. That little member right there gets us in more trouble. I know it gets me in more trouble. <laughs> Especially if you talk a lot. <laughs> and you know I do. I have to shut it off after an hour and just choke myself. But when you talk a lot, your tongue can get you in a lot of trouble. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm serious. It can get you in a lot of trouble. Because out of your heart, and what's in your heart is going to come forth. Whether you realize it or not, you'll be around people and things start spilling out of you. Whether it's good or evil, it just starts coming out, don't it? And you're like, wow, can't believe I just said that. Bob's going to think I'm crazy. Where'd that come from? Out of your heart? So if out of our heart comes evil murders and gossips, you know, that's not good. That means the Holy Spirit, we're not allowing Him to have us and refine us. It says this about the tongue in James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters. That means not many should proclaim to be teachers. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. <laughs> For in many things we offend all. And if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses of mouths, the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships which, though be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor list. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindles. Boy, y'all should know about that. We all have done that before. All it takes is one little word to come forth about a certain individual. And the fire is kindled. And it's out there. And then another one picks it up. Then Satan gets involved. And if you got a table full of people, we start talking about a certain individual. And it just tears that person apart. Am I telling a lie? It's true. And the Lord said, Nick, this has got to stop. Mm, because you claim to love God. How do we claim to love God when we have not seen? And yet, hate our brother and murder their character who we have seen. That, that's the Bible. That, that's what starts getting out there and, and convicting you. And like, whoo, okay, Lord, I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> it may be true. The lady was actually caught in adultery. And they were actually going to start. I mean, it was true. She was caught. But Jesus bent down and wrote in the sand. And by, when I go back there, we'll see what he was writing. Had to be mercy. Had to be grace. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members it, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Man, that's some strong words for the Bible to say about the tongue. And it's really not just this tongue. Man, it's just a slab of meat. It's what's inside of our heart. It's what's inside of our spirit. And it can happen to all of us. Man, I'm telling you, it, it, it is so easy for the devil to get involved even when someone calls and, and it starts talking about someone needing prayer. And it can go from someone needing prayer to, to, to going even further about their life and going even further about what they've done wrong and even further how they, they've been in this situation for a long time and even further how, how degrading it is. And it can keep on going where you're like, okay, hold on a minute. I can't get out of here before I get in trouble. 
Because you know what I'm saying? You get caught up in it and it takes you deeper and deeper and deeper. It's best to let the Lord know. So when we, when we need prayer, or we call someone and say, look, you need to pray for someone, so the Lord knows their situation. He knows it a lot deeper and stronger than we do. Amen. And we can pray for them to be set free and not start the gossip trail because it'll start going on. I've said this a million times in sermons. I know over the past eight years that if you start telling people your business, your business is going to wind up in Dallas the next day and then wind up in California and then New York City is going to bounce back to Idaho. It's going to be all over the United States. Then you're going to be an inquisitor before long. <laughs> oh, yeah, your business. And you tell a psychiatrist. I don't care who you tell. Tell a priest. And they say, well, oh, I, will not. I got to buy all the I will not tell anybody. If they go home and tell somebody else. And if you tell a preacher or a pastor, he's going to go home sometimes and tell his wife. Because humans talk. That's what he's saying. That tongue is going to talk. There's nothing wrong with communication with one another and even godly counsel. But when it goes too far, it can go into gossip. Then he goes into slander. Then he goes into character assassination. Then he goes into actually you're throwing stones. But well, they should have known better than that. <laughs> Am I telling a lie? They should have known better than that. Like the Pharisees, she should have known better than that. <laughs> One of them might have been the guy she was caught with. Now put his cape back on and his phylactery on his head and said, Yeah, she's guilty. <laughs> Think about it. While we're doing that, the Word of God says, Who are you? Have you done these things? The same thing you're talking about somebody else doing. Have you done them? Believe me, it breaks me over the coals too. I'm like, okay, i got to make sure I'm not in false doctrine if I'm calling out false doctrine. i got to make sure I'm not in this sin if I'm trying to help somebody else in this, this certain situation. i got to evaluate myself, my heart. Before I preach, i got to make sure I'm not doing this. i got to repent of what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? Many times we forget that. And we make ourselves judges over the whole kingdom. I'm sitting on the throne. <laughs> but the tongue will get you in trouble. And it brings death, y'all. It brings depression and oppression. Sometimes it's not the devil. It's of the devil. But sometimes it's not the devil causing the oppression of our loved ones. It's not the devil causing the oppression of the church family. It's not the devil. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's our tongue. Sometimes we have no love in our hearts. You know what I mean? Jesus said in the end days in Matthew 24, I want to say verse 11, that the love of many shall wax cold. And y'all, I believe that's happened right now. Anybody that can say they just hate someone else, which I've heard a lot lately from people, and people that are supposed to be saints, I just hate them. I can't stand this. I can't stand this. Anybody that can say that, like I said a while ago, how can you say you love God then? Because even your worst enemy, you can't hate. You may hate what they do. You may hate the sin. You may hate the Antichrist spirit they may have, but you can't hate them if you've got the Holy Spirit. 